and welcome to another episode of Literary Gladiators, the show where we discuss and debate literature in all of its forms. It's written work, it's game. Let's meet the panel. Hello, I'm Larry. I'm Kelsey. Hi, I'm Austin. Morgan. And I'm Josh. And today, and for a few episodes this season, we're going to have five people on our panel. We usually have four, sometimes three. We even had a session where there were only two of us. But, uh, Larry wanted to take part in this discussion, so... Here I am. By all means, <laughs> Larry's one of our favorites, so we'll, uh, we wanted him on board. Already right. have you, thank you. I, I'm, I'm, I have great admiration for everybody in this room right now, so... Uh, so one. sweet. What are we going over today, Lainey? Today we're going over The Catcher in the Rye by J.D. Salinger. This mm. is going to be exciting, because we have a mixed... Uh, <laughs> What's our first question? How would you describe Holden Caulfield? Do you believe he is a reliable narrator? He's a reliable narrator, but he is a misfit. He is, uh, he's just, he's not somebody I would want to hang out with. And I think that some of us agree with that. I wouldn't say that he's a reliable narrator at all. Yeah, his yeah, no, 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 his no. whole the whole story is skewed by his anxiety mm-hmm. and his it's skewed. Know, but trouble. I mean, what he's saying is what he's saying. It doesn't not reliable in. I trust the step by step thing that he is. He did he did this. He did that. But you're right about the fact that he's biased. Mm-hmm. But with regard to a sequence of events. So you trust the emotions he's feeling, not necessarily the story he's telling you. I trust, yeah, I trust his emotion, or I trust the fact that he went to a certain place at a certain time. But I think that the way he, the way that you view other people, you can't take his word for that. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I think he's a very unreliable narrator, but he's it's endearing because he's <laughs> he's honest. Yeah, yeah he's, uh, he has a lot of feelings, and he's, mm-hmm. he's explaining them all, and but, you know, that's all super subjective and not reliable at all, but you know, that's what makes him great. <laughs> I, yeah, he's, I mean, to me, like, the reliable narrator thing is, uh, you know, to me it's, it's about, like, how, how objectively are you observing what's going on around you? And because this story is, is a subjective tale, basically, you know, how he's feeling, I mean, he's. I think he's as faithful to that as, as he can be. I think he's 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 definitely uh, trying to be um, a reliable narrator. I think he. I think he's trying to be as honest as he can with what he's writing. I think he's unreliable and kind of to what you were saying, and that is, you know, anxiety and all the emotions kind of are coloring the events around him, and he's not really being objective at all. But I think he's reliable in that he will talk to the reader so much that even if he doesn't want something to come out, it's going to. Because he's yeah. the type of person who just has to talk and talk and talk and talk, and through that you learn everything about him. Yeah, he's reliable and he's honest. He's very yeah. honest. It, he, he, it's the, uh, the negative charges where uh, he's so unreliable that he becomes reliable. Exactly. Mm-hmm. He talks himself into it. But I think, going back to the question as well about just what kind of type of character he is, my opinion of Holden is that we're all supposed to read the novel and find that bit of Holden in ourselves. We're supposed to find that angsty phony within ourselves, I think. A lot of people I talk to who don't read the book, um, their, their opinion a lot of times has been, <laughs> I hate Holden Caulfield, he talks about everyone being a phony, but he's the biggest phony of all. Yeah. But it's not just, Yeah, but I think that's the whole point of the book. Yeah. I think that we're supposed to be able to read it and be like, wow. Because we're all projecting all the time. I think That's you really I'm need to be within the right uh, age group and the right mindset in order to understand him. Yes. And uh, <laughs> I'm there. <laughs> I, I, read this, I read this as a 24-year-old college graduate working in food retail. And, uh, but then again, I also have that my demeanor is much different from his, so there really is no way that the two of us are going to relate with one another. Mm-hmm. But I also see it in, in, in my own life, you know, when I, I, as I get older and mature, uh, I realize that a lot of the issues that I, I notice 
people having um, are issues that I feel like they probably you know either had in their life or that we've all had, and that why I don't get along with people oftentimes, you know, certain relatives or when people do certain things that annoy me, it's kind of because I am projecting this idea of what I don't like about myself mm -hmm. onto them and seeing that. And so, even though, I mean, yes, he's totally like the definition of like angsty teenager, over the top, melodramatic, about everything, I think the base idea of him projecting his own problems onto other people and seeing that back is something that we kind of all do and carry with us. As melodramatic as they come, and he accomplishes nothing. I think it's <laughs> his feelings are so valid, though, because when you, you're a kid and you see adults and they're you put them on this pedestal and they do everything for you, and you you think of the world as genuine and think that people are you know empathetic, and you expect that to be the world, and then you grow up and you're you're holding and everyone's a piece of shit, and you're like, God, God damn it, this sucks. Everybody sucks in these. You know, that's like a real feeling. I think that's maybe why I don't like him because I try so hard to stray from that, like, you know, expecting these like certain things that people are thinking people are something that they aren't. I try my hardest to, you know, just see people for who they are and the fact that Holden can't do that. And like nobody can really do that, but just like, you know, it's something that I strive for, just like, you know, seeing your parents as people. They're not just your parents, they're people. And like so many people struggle with that and that's definitely one of the things that Holden struggle with and it just annoys me. I think like you're annoying. He'll I think he'll get over that though. And I, I you like the, the talk he has at the end with his teacher, it's you gotta you gotta find your you gotta find what you like, you gotta go to school, you gotta Learn, 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 the learn. creepy teacher? Yeah, the creepy molester teacher. Um, but I think, you know, he'll get out of it. In the eyes of Holden, all, the teacher rubbed his head. Holden saw him as a creepy molester. He, as a, a molester by a uh, sex pervert. Yes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but the, it, could, it, it could be perceived in so many ways. But I think that Holden, I think most of us perceive it the way that Holden did. Yeah. And the, but you know that's what I like about Holden is in the afterwards he's reflecting on it, like am I my the asshole here? You know, he's like mm -hmm. he's not. Yeah. He's definitely capable of empathy and he's capable of seeing the good in, in people. It, you know, it, not in the moment necessarily, but like he kind of comes around. Yeah. With us he, yeah. He has a hard time. He he both loves people and despises them at the same mm -hmm. time. Like the same people. Like he finds. When he finds someone endearing or he really loves them, he's like, "You're killing me," and so stuff like that. And then, but then the same person will just hate them for like, in like the next minute. So he has this. I mean, you're talking about the nuns and the. Uh, the, the Every, everybody, everybody he talks to. His roommate, the roommate, his nightclub. Mm -hmm. I, I think that in some ways, you know, that duality is is kind of, in, well, I think in binaristic terms, but it is kind of the duality of, of human nature. I feel like there's always this question of, uh, are humans inherently good or are we inherently bad? Mm -hmm. You know, do we have faith in people or do we say we all are terrible and we should have no faith? And I think that's something that so many people constantly struggle with where, you know, human nature isn't inherently good or bad, but yet we view it in this binaristic way and, and so we have these really conflicting emotions about people mm -hmm. and I think that becomes difficult to, to how we see them. So it's hard to strive to see people as people because we have these these things mapped onto our world where we have to say, you know, either you have to be this way or you have yeah. to be this way. We organize people in a certain way and when they deviate from that, it, you know. Next question. <laughs> okay. How significant do you find the other characters in this novel? I think they're significant, but I also feel like they could be easily replaced with anybody else. I think there's one exception to that. I think, mm -hmm. the, and that is uh, his little sister Phoebe. Yes. yes. I think Phoebe's, the, his interaction with her is the only reason that I feel any sense of sympathy for him. Outside of that, I feel that he is just uh, an immature jerk. Yeah, I think Phoebe's like his only hope for like a positive outlook on things. Like and maybe his feeling. little brother Allie that yeah. has since been deceased. Yeah, yeah. I mean, Ali, I think, kind of represents like this this ideal that he's holding everybody to. Is like, 
And because he died when he was a child, right, it's like this perfect kind of person that's frozen in time, like mm -hmm. the fish under the lake in the winter. Mm -hmm. You know, where he can look at them, look, look at Allie and say, you know, why, why aren't people like him? Why, 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 you know, why can't we be like Allie? Mm -hmm. And I think that, so he kind of represents like an ideal. And Phoebe, uh, to me, represents like his place, like because I think that's what he's looking for throughout the book is is his place and his purpose, and for someone to give a crap about him. Mm -hmm. And in the end, you know, she's she's the one that does. Mm -hmm. So she kind of saves him in the end. Yeah, in a way, she's it's that uh, very iffy. Uh, she'll uh, she'll cause him a bit of grief when she goes off and uh, screams at him and all that. Mm -hmm. uh, at the same time, uh, the way that he responds to it is far different than how he responds to anybody else. Yeah. Yes. I would also, um, I would argue that, you know, all of the characters he mentions are very significant to him because he's meeting them during his time of crisis. And I see these people like, you know, the cabbie and the girls that he meets and all of those characters as like, these faces that he can't get out of his head when he's in mm -hmm. wherever he is in the end and then you know the like you know these conversations he can't stop having so I think these are all very important characters because in a way I feel they're haunting him mm -hmm. and that's I, why they're mentioned I feel like his roommate is a really important character um for a few reasons Ashley? no no Str no Stradlater, Stradlater. Mm -hmm. I think first I think Holden is a closet at Sexual first, and I think that he is uh, has a crush on Stride later, so I think that's really important. Um, like, if I read this is the third time that I've read the book, and the first two times I didn't think that at all. And this time reading, I'm like, oh sh shit, I'm pretty sure Holden's gay. Like, I don't know if anyone else read that, but um, that so I think the roommate's really important. And there's a scene with the roommate where they're in a car and he's talking about like being with girls, do you guys remember? And and, mm -hmm. and he's like the girl in the back keeps saying no, but Stradler like gets with the girls all the time because he doesn't listen to them when they say no. And Holden does, so he like doesn't get with girls. And I think that's related to like the end of the book where he's like that that kind of thing has happened to me a million times, like being um, like molested or abused. So I think that's important. I think for me really the, the most important character is um, besides Holden, um, it really it is Phoebe and Allie, and there's a, a few reasons for why I feel like, in some ways, I think that the other characters are significant, because, as you say, they really are haunting him, but I think that, almost similar to what you said, I feel like most of the characters could be replaced by anybody. I yeah. think that it's just how Holden's observing them and coloring them in his mind. Mm -hmm. But um, Phoebe and Allie, I think, well, you know, Phoebe especially, I think, kind of talking about this idea of are humans good or humans bad, this idea of like dualistic nature that is kind of in everybody where it's like, I really like you, but I also want to punch you in the face. <laughs> Children, oftentimes, I think, when we form close bonds with them, we see that there can be good in the world and that there's a hope for the world. And I think Phoebe can, in some ways, represent that in this idea that Holden sees everybody you know, dualistically, like, you know, you're, you're kind of cool, but I also really hate you. Um, but then Phoebe kind of represents this idea um, that maybe the world is good as long as I can find my place and give back to those who are coming after me, mm -hmm. which is my sister. And by doing that, I find what makes meaning for me. And the one other thing, for some reason, I always connect the two. Um, my favorite anime, I don't watch anime very much, but my favorite anime is one called FLCL. And there's a very interesting relationship between the main character and his older brother. And for some reason, I always connect that and um, The Catcher in the Rye together. Because I just think that these strong connections and finding meaning through siblings is something that a lot of us in the world, I think, have with family. It, it, it's that sometimes the only meaning in the world is those who are your family, whether they're blood family, chosen family, whatever. Um, and so I, I always connect the two because I think that there's a lot of things about finding meaning in your life through the close relationships that you have with just that one person, mm -hmm. both in The Catch and the Rye and in that, that show where um, the main character, whose name I can't remember, um, 
really finds his meaning through the relationship with his brother, who isn't there. He's he's moved to another country, um, and so Holden, uh, you know, does feel find that meaning in his life through Phoebe, but also in some ways through Allie, who is not there physically. So I, I make an interesting connection there. Laney had to uh, run out for uh, a moment, so uh, I'm assuming uh, moderating uh, duties. Uh, You're doing a uh, great job already. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't even say very much. <laughs> Already, uh, the next question is, uh, why do you feel this novel is on so many high school curriculums? Would you place this novel on yours? So the I feel that this novel is on many high school curriculums for all the wrong, wrong reasons. It's on high school curriculums because it is a perfect example of symbolism. And I don't feel, and teenage angst, so you can, you know, get your students to want to read it because they're all angsty and so is Holden. But, you know, they just focus on the symbolism in it and I think that it has so much more literary merit than that. Like there's so many other things that should be discussed that aren't the symbolism. Mm -hmm. So, you know, like, I wouldn't put it on mine because I hate Holden and it drives me nuts and I feel like I could find another angsty teenager to have my students, you know, connect to. But, you know, I appreciate that it is, even though it's not taught for the right reason, like taught in the right way. I'm probably, I, I would agree with you. I don't, I don't, I may be the only other one that agrees with you. Uh, maybe, I don't know about uh, Morgan, but. Uh, I don't even remember what the question was. <laughs> would you place, <laughs> if you were to put together a high school curriculum, would you catch the ID on it? Okay. You can answer first of all. Because I, I would not, I would not, I think that there are so many, I would, I would put a Robert Corman on as far as uh, I'm concerned. But uh, with, uh, I, think the, I think that this is very reflective of uh, teenagers' own lives, where it seems as if, uh, with Holden, the way Holden Caulfield was talking, it seemed like everything was about him. And well, it is when you're I think as a teenager, exactly, a lot of people have that mentality where everything is about you. It's a, it's a self-centered, uh, and especially in this day and age. But uh, the, with regard to, uh, I think that that is, and I also have this uh, postmodern idea that this, like Seinfeld, is a work about nothing. And if you want to be specific, it is the day in, a day in the life of a melodramatic teenager. Or in Seinfeld's case, a uh, day in the life. I think it's of much more than a day in the life. A comedian, or yes. it's, or it's not a day. <laughs> that, it is the life and times of a melodramatic teenager. I think not at all what you're saying. <laughs> <laughs> I would definitely put it in my high school curriculum, just because I think there's so much that happens to you when you're in high school and you're a teenager, and shit's scary. Like life's rough when you're growing up. It's just uh, everything's really confusing, and you know, I, I don't know. Um, but there's so much you could you could take out of that to, you know, help your students Aren't get there? through it. Like like suicide, depression. Uh, you know. Um, Aren't there other novels kind of like that the teacher. this? Mm -hmm. But what's wrong with this? This is great. It's Charlie from Books of Being Wild. Oh yeah, that's yeah. also I, a great book. I would say so. For me, I love it's one of my favorite books, The Catch and Rye. Um, but I, I agree with Kels. Kelsey, um, I think that when it's taught, it, it isn't always taught in the right way, and yeah. it's not accessible. Um, and it, and it's it's difficult because I think there's so much that teens can get out of it, and that young adults can get out of this book, but only if they are either reading it in that way or kind of being asked the right questions. Mm -hmm. I my experience in high school has been that so many people hated it because they thought that yes, you know, he's angsty and maybe they can relate, but they just thought he was annoying, and so. Like, like, like what you had asked, other other books, I would not only pick a different book, I would pick a more modern book, perhaps Perks of Being a Wallflower yeah. or something like 13 Reasons Why. I would want to put on my high school reading list because I think that would have a similar feel, but that, because it's more modern, it's, it's people aren't like, Ugh, I'm reading this old book. And I love Salinger, but he's, you know, his writing is incredibly dry uh, at times, but most of the time. Um, I feel like it's a salting cracker, I don't know. But, um, I think that relevance is the issue. It is mm -hmm. uh, just execution. 
But my other thing is, is that I feel like Charlie from Perks of Being a Wallflower is so much more accessible. I feel yes, that I would say that Holden, like Holden's situation, like Holden and Charlie are struggling with you know similar issues. Just Holden's situation is so much more elevated in the and unnecessary in the way that like you can get all of the same things out of Charlie. And Charlie's a more sympathetic character. Like, yeah. Can, like, mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. And I think his struggles more realistic and it's more accessible to you know teenagers who maybe don't struggle with things as much as others you can still like grasp that you yeah don't i don't think a lot of people are going to be on the run mm -hmm. or um, yeah going into nightclubs mm -hmm. uh, visiting teachers at their homes which and that may be a time and place thing but yeah and i agree i think that the other thing is that you know when the catch on the ride came out and it caused the big fear because oh my gosh vulgarity says damn on every page. <laughs> um, you know, I, I think that it was maybe more accessible to people um, and to teens at that time, but now, you know, the world has changed, literature has changed, what is considered edgy has changed, and so I think that a much more modern book, um, like Perks of Being a Wallflower, or like 748, 13 Reasons Why, things like that, would be much more accessible to a modern audience. Right. Yeah, and I... I I actually, surprisingly, probably to you, Josh, would not put it online either. Just because I hear how many young people hate it. Yeah. Huh? You know, and it's like, either it's not being taught right, or it's just, you know, not their cup of tea, or whatever it is. You know, why why make people read it? Yeah. Funny how I think, I think that your book is, uh, the book, but I think it's pervasive, references to it are pervasive enough within society that if people are curious about it, they'll come around to it on their own. Yeah. And uh, like, it wasn't required reading when I was in high school. And then eventually, obviously, has since become such. But um, yeah, so no, I, I don't think I would put it on there. I, I, perhaps one of those other books I haven't read the ones that you guys are talking about. But you know, maybe one of those would be better. If people are interested to find out, you know, why there are so many references to it. You know, in the, in the culture. I think ultimately, it should be up to the teacher. I think um, yeah. individual teachers should have the the. Uh, a say. Yeah, the oh, 100%. And, and just to, to go back real quick, you said how so many people here like the book and wouldn't add it. That's, I think, another reason why I wouldn't add it to my list because I love this book so much. Pick it apart. I don't want people, well, no, I would love to pick it apart and be able to say, I don't like this. This is interesting. What does this mean? But I love the book so much that I wouldn't want to teach it in my class and have all the students hate it. I would honestly <laughs> be <laughs> really upset. I would rather introduce them to something similar and then hopefully let them Is like that it, it could, That's like great. this book could be saved for students if it was taught correctly. Like I, I love book. discussing this book. Mm -hmm. I hated reading it and like that's a lot, you know, you don't have to always enjoy reading something to enjoy discussing mm -hmm. it. So if it was taught yeah, in the right I would way. say yeah. there are multiple examples of that. I hated the giver in school, but I love to talk about it. Yeah, absolutely. I enjoyed reading it and uh, talking about it. <laughs> final thoughts? Um, my final thought is that although I extremely dislike Holden, um, if you do like Holden and you like this um, novel, I would suggest reading I Am Jay. I'm not sure about the author, but we'll put it in the um, drop down box below. Um, it's essentially, I feel Jay, the main character of this novel, is Holden Caulfield, except he's trans. So I think if you're looking for, if you like more LGBTQ themes like I do, that you might also really enjoy I Am Jay. Uh, I love the book. Um, <laughs> I didn't want to force you to read it, but I've always thought that for some reason this is a book that I like to read at night, uh, curled up with a nice cup of hot cocoa, which sounds really stupid. But um, I think maybe Holden is very bitter, and so having some sleep while you're reading it. Headache. Um, <laughs> <laughs> <is> that... <laughs> um, but I, I, I love it. Um, please do yourself a favor. Well, do me a favor, and, yourself, <laughs> and give it a shot, because um, I think it's it can be a great fun way to do this. But you know, you just have I to kind of already. Yeah, I uh, same thing. Give it a give it a chance. I read it twice and didn't like it, and I just read it the third time, and I fell in love. I think because I'm a different person, and I'm like Holden probably is projecting on everybody. I'm probably projecting all of my things on Holden. So, <laughs> but it's great. I would say I thought it, I think there's a lot that can be taken out of this. I think that uh, I definitely 
read into uh, the way that this was put together, and it was pretty uh, uh, well done. But with regard to uh, just character and flow, it really, I wasn't fun with that. It's strategic, though. It, it's, it's strategic, <laughs> but it's just, you can, you can appreciate the strategy, but dislike the, the finished product. Yeah. yeah, it doesn't mix well to everyone. 100%. Uh, it's like a football team. I was just like, thinking that, I swear. That it was like a football team. To, it's, uh, to me, it's kind of beat in a way. It's like, mm. it's like beat mm -hmm. before beat, you know, where it's kind of giving voice to the, to the those who feel hopeless and kind of disenfranchised from, uh, from the world around them, just saying you're not alone, you know, which mm. to me is like the most important message that beat literature kind of brings out. Mm. And I think that this book can do that as well. And in fact, I think it's intentional. Like, I mean, the Catcher in the Rye. I, you know, I think that's the title of the book, even to the to the lecture that the pervy teacher is given at the end about how, you know, you're not the first one to feel this way. But if you're educated, at least you can share and communicate these feelings that you have. Mm -hmm. And it's definitely be, uh, you can make a comparison to that in the, on the road, where it's just an event. It's just somebody's adventures. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I like the book, and uh, if you don't like it, you're wrong. No, I like it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not Already, <laughs> let's break this. Uh, we're going to use the uh, zero to five scale with half stars permitted. Jeez, can I have half scale? Larry? I'm going to give it uh, four stars. And I'm not saying that you shouldn't read it when I say I don't put it on my list. Just sorry, real quick. Uh, <laughs> I just had one more thing to say. Uh, or ask, actually. Well, like, What do you guys think of like the language, right? Like, you know, it's... Uh, can be very offensive, um, you know, a lot of the terminology, you know, the way to refer to homosexuals mm -hmm. and and, uh, and other things like that. Like, does that does that present challenges to, to readers these days? Like, like you guys? I don't think so. I think that's why I think Holden's gay. I think he mentions it so much, and he, I just feel like he, it's it, it's a, a cause of so much of his like this cognitive dissonance that he has in every aspect of his life because he's calling everyone phony and he can't find anything genuine because he knows that he's not being genuine mm -hmm. with himself and he's a mm -hmm. phony. Um, I don't remember what I'm saying. Definitely something <laughs> that can be argued and explored. Um, but I think that, that that language is important that way. And I also think like the simplicity of his language and, and thoughts is um, really important. And I think that he he's, you can get a lot out of kind of the vagueness of his language you can like get more you can read more into it i feel like and also that use of language is a learning moment it's an educating moment so like mm -hmm. don't do this kind yeah of thing. yeah i think that it, it becomes hard in literature especially today when we to police the language yeah yes i think that yeah mm -hmm. ultimately policing language is, is is something that at times i think is, is definitely necessary but i think when, when we are reading a book especially um, this one, you know, perhaps Salinger could have written this character differently, but I think that he chose what he says and how he describes things for a reason, and we kind of have to, you know, prepare ourselves before we read a lot of words. I give it three stars. Neutral. Yeah. You bumped it up a star. That you had yeah. in your good reads. <laughs> well, I've been discussing it more, so my enjoyment has, uh, you know, elevated a little bit. Are you going to change it on your good reads? Oh, maybe. maybe. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I think most of you guys have uh, should update your uh, Goodreads accounts. Yeah, or get Goodreads. Yeah, I don't have one that one either. <laughs> um, I give it four and a half, partially because I'm way, I, it, it's one of my favorite books, and I don't really believe in five stars. Um, nothing's perfect. But I just think that there's so much to take out of it. And I feel like, yes, there's so much more that it could be, and so much more that it could have done, and a lot of the times where it does fail or delve into material that maybe shouldn't, but uh, I think there's so much to get out of it, and I really enjoyed it, so four and a half. So you're like Rex Reed from The Gong Show. He'll, uh, a perfect, uh, what should be 10 star act, uh, he gives it a nine. Yeah. Or 10 out of 10. Like the professors who don't give A's on paper. Oh God, so many of my art teachers don't. They're like, there's no a way you can have perfect. perfect art, and I'm just like, how am I gonna get an A? <laughs> <laughs> four and a half. And I, I give it, uh, I'm, I'm with Kelsey, I give it three stars. Uh, I like, I, I see uh, where uh, Salinger's coming from, but it's just not as uh, likable. Uh, I, or I just 
I don't find Holden Caulfield to be likable, though I think that his relationship with Phoebe and his feelings for his uh, younger brother that has been deceased, uh, I, can, I, I pick up sympathy on that, and it picks up a bit of ground on that. If you're interested in checking it out, here's the book. You're, pretty, you're probably familiar with this. And, uh, Buy it at the store. I'll leave uh, additional information on the left. Be sure to join us next time for another episode of Dory Gladiators for now. Keep reading.